live from Washington, D.C., Jay Sekulow Live. Phone lines are open for your questions right now. And now, Chief Counsel for the American Center for Law and Justice, Jay Sekulow. This New York law is barbaric. It allows, first of all, you, you, it's not even requiring a, a doctor to perform these surgeries. It's now allowing nurse practitioners, other health care providers. It's very vague. Removes all, the, like Gosnell case, removes all criminal liability issues. And this is what's happened in New York, and this is passed. And I'm going to go to uh, CC first, and Abby, we're going to reset this. As you look at the law, CC, what's the most disturbing aspect i mean you can make a list 100 miles long but what's the most disturbing aspect of this that there are just absolutely no protections for an unborn baby at any point and even possibly if they're born alive that a baby can be killed from any point um, even possibly if they're born alive so if the abortion is not successful and the child's born alive no protections it removes so abby it's removing the it, the whole idea here is to remove the personhood of the, of the unborn child Legally. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And and Vermont is is very clear about that. Um, an egg embryo fetus shall not have rights under Vermont law. By the way, look up the Latin word for fetus. I think it means unborn child. I'm going to look that up. I mean, Andy, you probably know off the top of your head. It is fetus. F-O-E-T-U-S actually in Latin. And that means something that is unborn but still has life, as I believe with Thomas Aquinas from the moment of conception, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, so there you have it. But you said politically they knew they had a chance because they got control of the Senate. I mean, they finally, so this has been brewing, but then they got control uh, finally of both uh, the legislatures there in New York, which had some Republican control in the past to prevent this from moving forward. The moment that shift in the last election cycle, you know, it's interesting to always see what's up first on your docket. What do you do? Is it health care for all that they always talk about? Medicare for all? No. No, No, it's it's, uh, fundamental abortion, they call it rights, uh, for all. Removing all restrictions on abortion whatsoever, putting conscious protections at risk, putting the the health of the I think the actual life of, the, of these mothers at risk by allowing non doctors to perform abortions, uh, taking away any kind of criminal uh, code violations when performing these uh, abortions, and no rights to the child as well. That's what's up first on their agenda. Not not again. Not other laws. But let but, me give you let me give you a disturbing fact. New York. This is according to CBS News. So this is not okay. Fact, according to New York, New York State's Department of Health, 285,127 induced abortions occurred in the state between 2012 and 2014. The average number of live births for the same three-year period was 237,499. If that is correct, there were more abortions than live births. Is that what they're saying? Then yeah. Will Shaken has said, that's what they're saying. And all this bill does is add to that. Absolutely. So now there's no restriction. None whatsoever. You can you can kill a child at any point. And what's crazy is because they've r- removed all the criminal aspects, you know, they might say, well, it still has to be a healthcare practitioner or, or well, means. it might be that it still has to, you know, protect the life or health of the mother. But if it doesn't, what what are what is the repercussion? Nothing. So who cares if just somebody off the street performs it or if the the woman herself performs it? There's no criminal prosecution for anybody who performs an abortion. So what does a prosecutor do, Andy, if there's gross negligence or criminal negligence, if they just give this blanket exception for life, for abortion? Well, well, in New York, nothing. Because they're in New York, the prosecutor doesn't have any discretion whatsoever because it's not a crime anymore. It's all been repealed. All those laws. Thank God I'm not in New York. We've got a lot more ahead on this broadcast dealing with this New York law, what's happening also in Vermont, New Mexico, in our battle for life. So we've got a lot more. Sign that petition at ACLJ.org. We encourage you to call the number that's on your screen or simply go over to ACLJ.org and stand for life. Back with more in a moment.
The state of New York just passed one of the most barbaric abortion laws in U.S. history, essentially making it legal to abort a baby at any stage of pregnancy up to the moment of birth. It even removes legal protections for babies born alive from botched abortions. Now other states are trying to do the same thing. At the American Center for Law and Justice, we've assembled our team to fight back. We're preparing to send Freedom of Information Act letters in an effort to expose exactly how involved Planned Parenthood and the abortion industry were in pushing this new law forward. We're looking at every possible way to challenge the New York law. We're mobilizing to ensure that these laws cannot be used to target pro-life doctors and nurses and force them to perform abortions. And for examining other legal angles as other states look to pass similar laws. You can make a tremendous difference in this fight to protect life. Add your name today to our petition to expose and defeat barbaric abortion laws. Online, aclj.org. All right, so New York puts forward the most aggressive abortion law in history. It does not protect... Is it fair to say, Cece and Abby, that it does not protect the unborn child? By the way, the word fetus, just so we're very clear, because it says in the Vermont bill, it says fetus, correct? What does that Vermont bill say? It was in there something about the... Um, fertilized egg, embryo, and fetus. Okay, well, let me tell you what the actual Latin of fetus, if spelled, by the way, F-O-E-T-U-S, is the English transliteration of that. The young... While in the womb or egg. The young, the young what? The young person. Right. So what are they doing here is eliminating personhood. That's what this is about. Let's go to the phones. Yep. We go right to the phones. We appreciate people who have been holding on. Bethany in Missouri on line four. Bethany, welcome to JSECU Live. Hi. Hey. Um, so my question is, um, I, I'm a labor and delivery nurse, or I was, um, and so if we have a mother come in say, full term and there's an emergency, whether baby's in distress or mother, um, we would perform an emergency C-section. So I guess what I'm trying to figure out is at what point or what situation would warrant to kill the baby when we know the baby would survive just fine outside of the womb at that point. Well, I mean, it's a great point you're making, Bethany. And this is uh, Dr. Omar Hamadi, who's on Fox News uh, this weekend talking about it. Take a listen. Basically, in the third trimester of pregnancy, there is not a single condition that requires an abortion. There's not a single condition that requires that we kill the baby before delivery. Um, there are several things in third trimester pregnancy that require that we deliver the mother, and uh, that is a fact, but there's not a single thing that actually requires us to kill the child. So as, I mean, as Bethany just said, as, as a delivery nurse, even in these distress situations, you'd go through a delivery even if there was something wrong with the child right. or the mother, not an abortion procedure. Yeah, but never here, and never uh, necessary. Yeah, but here's what the way I understand this is: first of all, as Andy said, if there was something done criminally in regard to the abortion procedure, as relates to the procedure itself, no prosecutions. It sounds like the penal code has been removed as to abortion. Repealed. So that means, for our audience, you can bring nothing. No crime. Okay. Secondly, even says the word fetus, which we've already described it as a young, uh, y- the young while in the womb. So that that's and Vermont, you said, is even more explicit, at least as far as the terminology goes, Abby. So what what and then Vermont hasn't passed yet. So you got a chance to defeat this This is where you need legislative uh, grassroots to defeat this. What's the situation there? Why will you say it's more more direct, maybe? Well, it is just more direct. Um, It's a longer bill than the New York one, which is just a paragraph as far as the Reproductive Health Act portion of that bill. But it essentially says every individual has a fundamental right to have an abortion, 
there are no rights for eggs, embryos, and fetus for children, unborn children. And then it just goes on to remove any criminal prosecution um, for um, for engaging in an abortion, even when that child is viable in the womb. I mean, let's say you are one day away from delivering and you decide you no longer want that baby. Perfectly healthy baby. It's a license to commit murder. I mean, that's, that is what it is. Andy, you're that's shaking your head. What it is, a license to commit murder. It is murder. It is the premeditated and willful taking of the life of a human being by another with malice of forethought. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's the definition. Followed. Wherever you look, that's the definition of murder. And that's what this is, killing. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people on Facebook and Periscope writing in this like the Old Testament infanticide. Yes, um, it sounds like it was being legalized in New York and and celebrated in New York as well as a positive right, not as a, a yep. again, not as a, a sad thing that might have to happen because it never what does have to. You happen. Remember that Clinton it was safe, legal, and rare. Under Obama, it was more, you know, safe and legal. Now it's like encouraged. It's legal. Yeah. 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 Like it's anytime, in- any point, for any reason. Yeah, I mean, this is this is what you got. Let's take another call. Aaron's calling in from New Mexico on line three on those conscience issues uh, there. Aaron, welcome to JSECU Live. Hey. Hi, thank you Aaron. for taking my call. <clears throat> Again, as I stated earlier, I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I don't necessarily have a comment. Or I'm, I'm, I don't necessarily have a question, more so of a comment. Uh, I have no, enormous growing concern regarding New Mexico House Bill 51, like yep. New York, will, re- will repeal the criminality aspect for abortions. So I just wanted to get your take on that. It it just passed the one of the smaller committees and it's moved it's been advanced to the House Judiciary Committee here. The Gosnell case was the perfect example of where there was all these criminalities as it related to the procedure of abortion itself, Andy, and by removing it out of the penal code, you're the 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 district attorney, what do you the state's or state's attorney general, what do you do? You don't do anything. You can't do anything. You can't bring a crime uh, a criminal proceeding. You can't indict. You can't charge with a crime. And this is infanticide. It's the killing of a human being by another, and it's the taking of a life. And it gets any time you want to. It's death on demand. Yeah, I'm death on demand. There's there's strong language. Let's. I'll tell you what. We're going to keep taking calls and get your comments. Yeah, Jessica's calling from New York online five. Jessica, welcome to JSEC Live. Hi, Hi Jessica. Hey, hey. Uh, calling from Buffalo, New York. Couple yep. concerns, comments. Um, I agree with a lot of the other callers from New York State, but one of the things that I don't know if we brought up, but in New York, we actually treat our criminals better than our infants, where we prohibit the criminals from getting lethal injections in prison, but yet an unborn fetus has no rights and can get that same lethal injection. Um, The other frustration we face here is being in upstate New York and Buffalo, we feel like no matter how many Republicans or Christians come out and vote, that we're kind of stuck with the Democratic hold from New York City. Yeah, well, and that's a that you live in a constitutional Republican in a Democratic state. That's uh, when I say Democrat, I'm talking about just the system of governance. This is this is the problem. But here's where you're losing hearts and minds of people, and that's the problem here. For instance, the language in the Vermont bill, the way I understand it, Abby, is every individual who becomes pregnant has the fundamental right to choose to carry a pregnancy to term give birth to a child, or to have an abortion, even if you carry the child to term. Is that what it says? Yes. So That is what it says. I, I, you know, we looked at all these restrictions on late-term abortions. It seems like all this is out the window under these states. It is. It is all out the window. And here's the thing that we know comes next is the state taxpayers will be funding these abortions. Yeah, so that how does that make you feel? It, it, what do you think the political move is here next for them? Uh, the next political move, yeah, I think is how do you, uh, because there's also Medicaid reimbursement criminal laws at play here too. We've gotten into that as much. Yep. We were talking about it before. Is that it repeals all these criminal code provisions, so including Planned Parenthood trying to double bill or things like that. It's repealing any kind of criminal uh, laws that would possibly be available to a prosecutor, even when it comes to like Medicaid fraud. So what, what is the there's a provision in the New York law that actually does that, yeah. Susie? When it starts talking about all the laws that are repealed, um, it definitely goes into the section, it's 17710 and, and the following ones, about health care fraud. So that means if, you, if you're if you trying to get reimbursed for something that didn't happen or maybe you shouldn't be getting reimbursed for, it doesn't matter. It, it, you can do that. So this just was an open the floodgates approach. Is that what you think, Abby? I mean, this was just like... Because you're removing, it's one thing, it's horrible if you're removing the sanitation kind of issues and sterilization of the facilities, and that's still, not, I, I don't know if that'd be fraud now or not, I guess not, 
uh, or the Gosnell situation. But now they're saying if you commit a income a, or a, a fee billing issue, that's not a crime anymore either. Planned Parenthood definitely has its claws in this yeah. because we know that that's how we've been able to challenge Planned Parenthood in the past is committing fraud. Um, and so, I, I mean, Planned Parenthood is definitely celebrating this. It takes away all accountability. It can do whatever it wants um, without any accountability whatsoever. All right. So this is the, the nature of what it is, but it also takes away the ability of prosecutors to move anything forward. Under New York law, a prosecutor doesn't have any discretion, doesn't as precluded so what, from I'm prosecuting. Trying to, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what got him there. Well, let's, I would take Amy's call because I think okay, it's go a ahead. good way. Amy in Pennsylvania online, too. Amy, welcome to Jay Secchio Live. You're on the air. Hi, Amy. Hi. Hi. Thank you for taking my call. Um, while we're talking about all the the positive of, you know, the positive rights for mothers, yep. what about those that ended up losing rights, like a mother who was abused by her husband and ends up losing her child because she was beaten up and lost her child. So that used to be that a double pros- like- that used to be a double prosecution for both the the woman who was beaten up if assault she survived and assault and then murder of the unborn child. What is that under New York law? No, homicide now uh talks about uh you know relating to a person and then it defines person as a human being who has been born and is alive. So no longer, mm. if you kill a pregnant mother, are you killing a child, a baby, her baby That too. has been decades, Andy, you're looking at it. It's been decades of, we only have 48 seconds here. There's been decades of, I mean, 50, 100 years, quickening of the it's, child, it was called. It's it's unheard. This is unheard of. I, I, I read this bill and I was aghast with the horror that it commits on a child that is unborn, that has life within it, and that is being taken away at the whim of the state legislature in New York. Sign that petition at ACLJ.org. We encourage you to call the number that's on your screen or simply go over to ACLJ.org and stand for life. Back with more in a moment. The state of New York just passed one of the most barbaric abortion laws in U.S. history, essentially making it legal to abort a baby at any stage of pregnancy up to the moment of birth. It even removes legal protections for babies born alive from botched abortions. Now other states are trying to do the same thing. At the American Center for Law and Justice, we've assembled our team to fight back. We're preparing to send Freedom of Information Act letters in an effort to expose exactly how involved Planned Parenthood and the abortion industry were in pushing this new law forward. We're looking at every possible way to challenge the New York law. We're mobilizing to ensure that these laws cannot be used to target pro-life doctors and nurses and force them to perform abortions. And for examining other legal angles as other states look to pass similar laws. You can make a tremendous difference in this fight to protect life. Add your name today to our petition to expose and defeat barbaric abortion laws. Online, aclj.org. All right, well, this is horrific. That's why I call it barbaric and horrific. This is the New York State's law on their new law on unrestricted abortion, no protection for the unborn child, denial of personhood of the unborn child, um, a complete pass on criminal procedure. I mean, just a crim- criminality. I mean, I, sweeping is an understatement. And New York's proud of it. They're lighting up buildings. Vermont's looking at doing the same thing. So is New Mexico. So we're looking at all of the legal avenues to possibly challenge this. It's not an easy task because getting into court on this could be difficult. We're looking at New York state law. We're looking at a Freedom of Information Act request to the legislature or to the Department of Health um, and to figure out any angle that might exist here to challenge what is uh, just barbaric. But the state, you know, that Roe versus Wade returned it to the states. So their argument is going to be, see, see. We return it to the states. Yep. And we as New York have decided that right. a ba- an unborn baby has absolutely no rights. And this is the fallacy with that argument of just returning. Roe versus Wade was the return it to the states case. I get that. But the fallacy is you ignore the personhood of the unborn child. And that's the fundamental issue that's really at stake that nobody wants to address. Now, I don't know if there's a majority of the Supreme Court that would say that or not. But I mean, it's how do you, you can't argue with the medical science, Abby. I mean, it's that's clear. It's it's undisputable. Right. And they don't even try that anymore, actually. Right. I mean, they right. Don't, yeah, they don't even they don't even try that as the argument. Now they're saying, well, the, the fetus, which is young person, basically unborn, 
They have no rights, period. All right, let's take a call. Yep, back to the phones uh, we go. Let's go to Deborah in South Carolina, online one. Deborah, welcome to JSEC Hill Live. Hi, Deborah. Good morning. I'm actually the mother of someone who was born at 26 weeks. Yep. And the child in the incubator beside him was born at 19 weeks. Both of those children live to be at their fifth birthday party at the hospital. Now we spent some time in a NICU. Sure. But don't tell me that they're not viable at 19 weeks because I know differently. Don't tell me that they're not viable at 26 weeks because my son is now 38 years old. So as a mother, I'll fight beside you side by side to overturn or do whatever we have to do to change these laws. Deborah, I appreciate that. And thank you for your support. But let me tell you something. They don't care in this law. Viability is not an issue, right? Viability does not matter at all. This baby can be born in two seconds. It can be in the process of being delivered, but it can be killed at any point. How big of a deal is that, Abby, that the viability is not even an issue anymore? It used to be that was kind of the standard. Now it's not. It it is a big deal. And um, what's surprising is in in New Mexico, one of the proponents of the new legislation um, call um, these positions archaic. It's archaic that we would want to protect the life of an unborn child, that we would want to criminally prosecute the murder of an unborn child. Yeah. It's astounding. Right. But politically, they got there. Not only did they get there, it's not like they're doing it in secret. I mean, they're, they're celebrating. They're lighting up the Freedom Tower. The, the needle in the Freedom Tower, needle of all things, is is pink. And again, um, people are, are there are a lot of people in New York concerned that this is, again, when you take these kind of actions... Um, again, you know, it's, and you start devaluing life this way, what occurs next? Yep. You know, what, what's the next step here? Um, let's go to Teresa in New Jersey on line three. Teresa, welcome to J Secular Live. Thank you for having me. Yep. I'm just curious to know that people convicted of, of murdering born babies, babies born alive, like Goss. Now, if other states follow suit, does that mean that these convictions for killing born babies born alive will be overturned? Not that they'll be overturned, but they won't be able to bring them, Andy, right? I mean, the no, prosecutor's not going to be able to bring no. it. No, I mean, in, in New York, I mean, if this law continues and stands and is not overturned by some uh, other court uh, or some court, uh, will deny a prosecutor the right to bring any kind of action for murder or for infanticide or killing of any kind. As I, so I said, this is death on demand. You want to kill that baby? Kill it. Yeah, mm, death on demand. All right, let's take another call. Yep, uh, Kathy called in from Sacramento, California, on line four. Kathy, welcome to JSECU Live. Hi, thanks for taking my call. My thought is, is that people would have a fit if you took newborn puppies and injected them with some kind of poison yeah. to kill them. Are there laws out there that are regarding animals yes. that we can show the barbarity of this compared to what we would do to an animal? Well, look, I mean, unfortunately, I mean, I'm not nothing against animal rights, uh, but yes, there are laws that I understand why they have them. There are laws that prevent the cruelty to animals. It's usually it could be criminal. It could be a state prosecution. The you same gotta, is not gotta, huh? gotta, serious prison terms. Yeah, for that. yeah. I mean, if you if you if you do that with criminal intent, you could be liable for a crime. In the context of an abortion, that is not the case, Cece. There is no criminal penalty whatsoever. So even though this Reproductive Health Care Act has some language in there about you know who can perform it, which is again very Almost anybody loose, yes. And they talk about 24 weeks and they talk about viability. Again, it's, you know, very loose. But what if someone doesn't follow that? It's, there's no way to enforce this. So it is literally opening up abortion at any point, any time, by any person. There is no criminal penalty whatsoever. I mean, the same question keeps getting asked. I mean, we're asking it too. And Donna writes it on Facebook. Why would they even come up with this law? What's the purpose What's the end game? I think it's they look at a changing Supreme Court. So that's part one. We're, I don't think we're there yet, by the way, of Roe versus Wade being overturned. But they 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 see a potential for that. If one more retirement from someone on the left uh, uh, and another appointment by someone like President Trump, possibly, and then it does go back to the states. Uh, and states like New York, as we would always uh, know, these kind of blue states are going to be the states that have the most liberal abortion laws possible. And they're already 
writing them into law. And their next step actually is that that's not good enough for Andrew Cuomo. He wants it in their constitution so it doesn't so it's that much tougher to repeal. Yeah, so this. let's talk about that. If they make it a constitutional right guaranteeing the state constitution, mm-hmm. Abby, what does that mean? Um, well, it means that it's even more difficult at that point. I mean, you know what is involved in amending the Constitution, and once that's done, it it is rarely undone. Are they talking about doing that in Vermont as well? They are. They are. It's on the table in Vermont. So they want a constitutional it. right to this, uh, to exist like this. Now, Andy, what we're doing right now is trying to figure out the avenues of attacking the law. It's not. I, I'm saying this. We're we're going to look at every. Believe me, I want every stone unturned here, every rock un, unturned. But I. It's not going to be an easy challenge. No, it's not. We have to find the right plaintiff. We have to find the right person, the person who is in the right position to pursue to overturning this law. Now, in Vermont, if they do, in fact, not recognize the conscience right, Abby, that would give someone like a doctor or a nurse or a, a health care provider the ability to challenge the law. That's right. It would. Okay. So if that's the same situation, CC in New York, and I don't know by the review of it right now, if it, it violates the conscience right, we've got a lot of those cases, that would be the way in to challenge this. That's right. That would be another open door where you could come in and attack just the ridiculousness of this statute. But they're also trying to change the use of language here, Andy. It's no viability. out. Th- they don't want to talk about viability Doesn't anymore. Matter they want to viable. talk about personhood anymore. No, for personhood, fetus, viability, the ability to be sustained, conception at uh, birth, at con- or rather, rather, personhood at conception, all that is out. We've, we've wiped away with one fell swoop hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of legal and what is more outrageous, moral history. Yep. Well, that's going to do it for the broadcast this week. Let me encourage you to go over to ACLJ.org, sign that petition now, and support the work of the ACLJ. You can do that by calling the number on your screen or simply go over to ACLJ.org. That's ACLJ.org. Also, pray for our team. We are looking at every possible legal option to challenge these barbaric laws. New York, Vermont, New Mexico. That's the ones that are right now in the sites, but we got to see. And we need your help. Support the work of the ACLJ. Again, the number's on your screen. Sign that petition at ACLJ.org. And you can support the work of the ACLJ also at ACLJ.org. The state of New York just passed one of the most barbaric abortion laws in U.S. history, essentially making it legal to abort a baby at any stage of pregnancy up to the moment of birth. It even removes legal protections for babies born alive from botched abortions. Now, other states are trying to do the same thing. At the American Center for Law and Justice, we've assembled our team to fight back. We're preparing to send Freedom of Information Act letters in an effort to expose exactly how involved Planned Parenthood and the abortion industry were in pushing this new law forward. We're looking at every possible way to challenge the New York law. We're mobilizing to ensure that these laws cannot be used to target pro-life doctors and nurses and force them to perform abortions. And for examining other legal angles as other states look to pass similar laws. You can make a tremendous difference in this fight to protect life. Add your name today to our petition to expose and defeat barbaric abortion laws. Online, aclj.org.